Yes. Hi. How are you today? I'm good, thank you very much. Good, good. Amen. Well, we'll wait just another minute. We do have uh, an announcement some of you are aware of, but we'll get to that in a moment. I, I wanted to include this um, later. It's so on point with the encouragement and the word that you just gave. This is very short and I just wanna read it quickly. Um, um, uh, a word that I received one night, uh, uh, two nights ago, I was struggling in the middle of the night. And that word was to focus on the faith in which our foundation in Christ Jesus has been laid in that he arose. Amen. I could not go to sleep. I had to, I've had to struggle to find a, a pen and a piece of paper because this was impressed, being oppressed upon me so hard. It was almost just like there was an angel saying, there saying, you have to write this down. Mm. And I was saying, okay, okay, I need to find a pen. And that was it. Focus on the faith in which your foundation in Christ Jesus has been laid mm. in that he arose. Hallelujah. Whatever anyone gets from that. That was that word and Amen. what you just said. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Linda, why don't you go ahead and start us with prayer on that note? Amen. That's Praise a great God. note. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Praise Father. God. Lord God, we thank, thank you Jesus. for this day that you have made. Hallelujah. Lord God, we will rejoice and be glad thank in Jesus. it. Lord God, thank you for bringing us together. One more time, Lord God, to, mm -hmm. to be in your presence as a body, Lord God, and to uplift your name, Lord, and, and give you the praise, Lord. We yeah. just ask, Lord God, that you would just uh, you would just lead us and that you will guide us in each and everything that is happens today, that, that you have laid upon mm -hmm. the various hearts that are here, Lord God, and Lord God, that we will just rise up lord god in our praise lord god knowing that you have given us a brand new day lord god and that we are to rejoice in this lord god and that we are to forever remember that to keep the faith no matter what is that we are to keep the faith and that we are to rise above the adversity and why because you rose Hallelujah. Because Hallelujah. you rose, Lord God, and, and we thank you, Lord God, for this day, Lord God, and for the thing that you are doing in each of us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 God. God bless you, brethren. I'm going to stay for just a moment while an announcement is being made but I will be on my phone in another part of the house caring for our grandchildren. Amen, yeah, praise God. Well, some of you know, some of you maybe don't. Um, Dennis and Jeanette Rapp, who have been uh, a part of us for such a long time. Uh, Sandra even goes way back to Schenectady, New York, where he, uh, she knew all the family, uh, the Delamaters, uh, some of you might even remember, Glenn, you might remember very well, Betty Delamater. Yeah. And this is her daughter, Jeanette. And uh, she ran into some complications here health-wise uh, a few weeks ago, uh, three days ago, she had to be rushed by ambulance to the hospital and uh, many complications uh, arose. One of them was COVID. And so her lungs uh, contracted pneumonia and uh, so it was a spiraling effect. And uh, uh, we were just in close contact with Dennis in the midst of that and Sandra by night uh, through phone calls to Jeanette and uh, a miracle really took place because she went into emergency and normally the relative, anybody spouse cannot come in. They're not allowed into that room. And they allowed Dennis in not only the whole day, but in the evening. And 
the next day, he was allowed in that day and that evening. And uh, Jeanette was uh, on the phone with several family members. Um, just, amen. We didn't know, but she was doing business with everyone and with the Lord uh, of a major magnitude uh, before everything turned south the night before last. She went on a respirator, um, more complications, uh, hemorrhaging in the brain. So we just uh, had to resign her to the Lord. Amen. God was saying, I'm taking her home. Uh, so that's the, the report here. Jeanette Rapp has gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, we just thank the Lord that she had a short period of suffering, really short. Amen. And God took her home. And uh, Dennis is doing well, as expected, you know, he has his moments, very difficult, of course, but they leave behind uh, quite a legacy. Three sons, a daughter, uh, the oldest son and daughter, uh, just faithfully walking with the Lord, very strong, very strong in the, in the faith. Amen. They're two youngest sons that aren't even that young now, amen, in their 30s, are still at home, not married, but uh, they leave behind quite a legacy, five grandchildren. And so we just remember them very, very well. So if we can remember, uh, Dennis, maybe we'll even pray here a prayer for the rap household. Uh, you know how it is, you know, in the flurry of everything happening, uh, it's just uh, quite tragic. Uh, on our end, we're gonna suffer quite a loss with losing Jeanette, but uh, it is heaven's game, amen. And the Lord has chosen to take her home. Praise. Amen. So, Jeanette, or maybe Sandra, why don't you go ahead and pray? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Father, we come before you yes. with nothing but praise and thanksgiving Amen. for a beautiful life well lived. Mm -hmm. A servant of the Most High God, giving freely of herself and her goods to so many with such a burden for the lost and for young people. And for the poor and anyone who was needy, she was there for them. And Lord, we thank you. She was fervent in prayer, faithful right to the end, Amen. full of joy, full of hope. Having made the profession, I am ready to meet my Lord. If I stay, I win. And if I leave, I win. Mm -hmm. A win-win situation. Mm -hmm. And Lord, she was full of laughter. This is how you made her. And Lord, we are grateful to have been a part of her life. And Lord, we know you have received her home in glory. And she will be with her precious mother, Betty, who we just loved dearly. Mm -hmm. And Lord, she will be joined by a host of those that have gone on before us. We just pray that you'd be with the family. Each and every one are being hit in different areas by the loss. And for all the people that loved her throughout her lifetime, be with them, comfort them, strengthen them. And Lord, let us remember her, not with sadness, but with such joy for who she was Amen. as a person. And so, Lord, I thank you for having known her. Yes, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Is Sandra, what are the names of her who, the two boys that are at home? We met them when we spent the night with them. Sure. Uh, Jeff and Jared. Okay, I remember Jeff, but Jeff and Jared. Jeff and Jared. Uh, the two uh, young men that lived with them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Matt, who is married to Nikki, lives in Washington, and they have three children. And then Noel and Matt, who are in Miss, uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and they have two children, a little boy and a girl. And she saw them in November. Mm -hmm. She was with them in November. Yeah. Okay, I, I read in... Uh one of Bob's emails that one of her last requests is that we pray for those two boys. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 Yeah. 
her, her request, you know, even what she spoke to her two boys was that, uh, you know, when I get to heaven, I expect you to be coming behind and I'm expecting to see you there, you know, amen. Because they had asked her, mom, yeah. what can we do for you? Is there <laughs> anything at all we can do? And she said, anything? Mm -hmm. yeah. And she told them what her heart's desire was. Amen. But the beautiful thing is that with her health issues so in the forefront, she managed to call every single person that was family and those that she loved and communicate with them all day long. Mm -hmm. Before she went on the respirator, she talked to everyone, mm -hmm. everyone. Yes. And she just, they had fellowship. And Amen. so it was a beautiful thing. Amen. Amen. Yeah, just the night before last at 8.30 at night, I had a conversation with both Dennis and Jeanette in the ER of the hospital. And uh, Jeanette just uh, shared just one portion, I'll share this today. Uh, she said just a few months ago, uh, she said she just got before the Lord, amen. And she got down on her face before the Lord just prostate and said, Lord, I surrender all. I give all to you. And she said, whatever it takes, Lord, to save my children, amen. And to bring in those that I know that I prayed for that are lost, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever is necessary. And so she laid her life down, praise God. And so she remembered that prayer and she shared it with me just hours before uh, she went on the respirator. And of course they sedate her quite heavily then and uh, no one could really uh, commune with her then. But her two boys uh, did speak to her just before um, she passed on. While she was on the respirator, they believe her hearing was still there. And both the boys said, mom, we'll see you there. We'll see you in heaven. So praise God. I'm sure that brought tremendous joy to her soul. Praise God. Amen. Great. Anyone else have anything to impart it, to share? Uh, praise God. Concerning our sister, Glenn, Linda. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, Brother Ben, go ahead. Brother, Brother Glenn, go ahead. You start first. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have just been so enriched by um, Jeanette and, you know, Dennis, that when, when we, they open up their, their hearts and their doors to us, you know, um, times and many times we have been there, we have stayed with them and, and, and she just, just, just flows with just life, you know, touching you, you know, and just making you feel so good. I mean, I'm just thinking, you know, how we, you know, and I'm sure Linda. They just gave great. us the key to their house. You know, and just. They just, just uh, we barely <clears throat> knew them. We were coming through there and she said, she told us where the key was and to just go in and make ourselves mm -hmm. at home. Yes. It was a marvelous place and, you know, yeah. a wonderful time of getting to know them in their family. And she was just an amazing, loving person yes. as they are. And that, one of the other things too is that is encouragement and, and just encouraging others, you know, and she encouraged us, you know, um, and that's a part of her, that's a part of her ministry, I believe, you know. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so th this was a thing that really was precious. And so we 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 know that uh, um, that the Lord, you know, we we when we were uh, yesterday when we prayed, you know, we, you know we knew that uh, um, that the Lord had this, and that if you know that she would be okay. And I and I was thinking about what you said, David. She didn't have to suffer, yes, uh, anything, you know. And the Lord just you know took it there. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Glenn, Linda. Praise God. Yeah. Brother Ben, amen. I know you have something on your heart to share here, too. Praise God. Praise God. You know, the story of uh, our sister, I believe, will not be complete without me saying something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Well, you know, uh, last week I shared the word about we being friends of God. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says that there is a friend that is closer than a brother. And if there was any practical demonstration of that uh, phrase, it was the life of Sister Janet and Brother Dennis, you know. These were people, I, I, when I moved from New York to Atlanta, you know, I met them because we were sharing fellowship. We had the Lawrenceville Fellowship and the Woodstock Fellowship. And um, I met them briefly, but I got to know them a couple of years later, you know, when I was passing through my own challenge. And um, when I can say this to, you know, when there's nothing called hypocrisy, you know, I learned a lot from their lives that, um, you know, as Christians, you don't judge your brothers or sisters when they are passing through challenges. Don't believe that it's because of their transgression or sin or whatever it is. But they were out there trying to make sure I was okay mentally, spiritually, and physically, you know? And uh, one thing about them that touched me was that they were always open to have brethren come fellowship in their house. Yes. And they were concerned about their neighbors. They would go out to reach out to neighbors, invite them to come to church. That was a form of evangelism, which I believe is not very strong among us, the end time brethren. They open up their houses, reach out to their neighbors. And the young man, I think Sister Sandra mentioned, who was in the same college with the son. Mm-hmm. And I believe it was like, um, um, an orphan, I don't remember now, or he had no parents, but they took him in and raised him like their own child, you know? All that touched me so much. And um, when my brother was uh, kidnapped in Africa, Nigeria, uh, 2018, oh my, I, you know, you will not understand what it means when your, your twin brother is in the den of kidnappers. Mm-hmm. I was here in America, I couldn't do much, but I was almost losing my mind. And every point in time, God used this couple, especially Sister Jeanette, because she was very sensitive to the spirit. And every time I prayed for God to help me for a word to come, she would call, or the, you know, Brother Dennis would call that, oh, Sister Janet wanted to say something. And she would just go right to the point. And you know that that was God speaking through her. Yes. And one of the things that even touched me most was um, when I was really, really scared, you know, I, I felt they were going to harm my brother and I needed a specific word from God. And both of them, I wrote, incidentally, were traveling by my neighborhood in Augusta. And they called me that, look, they have a word, even if it means seeing me for just a couple of minutes, let's pray together. And I said, well, I wasn't home, but I was driving. And they said, where am I? Incidentally, they were just one exit behind me, less than five minutes. So I knew it was the Lord doing this. So we had to exit into, I think in front of one of these fast food restaurants, we stayed in the, in the parking lot and prayed together. And every word that came out of her mouth, I could testify and witness that that was God talking because she didn't know what I was thinking. She didn't know what my, my fears were, but God gave her the right words to touch me with, you know, and um, when uh, she called on Thursday, they said she was in the ICU, you know, her voice was so strong, but it was, she was at peace telling me that, you know, we love you, brother. You've been a part of, uh, in fact, they were family to me and she was encouraging me and I was, I wasn't really happy. I was trying to tell her to keep quiet that I don't accept my desire is that you should be, you should stay longer with us here because we need you. But you know, she, I think she surrendered to the will of God and she was ready to go see the Lord. But what touched me, even in, in that, I won't call it death because the Lord says that uh, even though we die, that's physically, we shall live forever. Amen. So even then when she was in that transition state, she was encouraging people letting them know that she's at peace to miss her creator. That was for me a very glorious way to, to go meet your Lord, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, when 
when the scripture says that the end of Zion, you know, when um, um, that prophet was going to curse, was it, um, it was going to, he was asked to curse the children of God and God mm -hmm. kept giving him a vision. I, I, I forgot his name now. Baylor. Yeah. Yeah, Bill, I thank you. I did the study there. Yeah. And um, he said, I want my end to be like his. He yeah. saw how Z uh, Zion was even in death. Yeah. I said, this was a real example that if I'm going to also go, I want to go the way my sister went. She yeah. was at peace. Yeah. She, she, she was not afraid of death. Yeah. And, you know, and she even in that situation, she called people to bless them. Just like Jacob blessed the 12, 12 sons, you know, she kept everything tidy in the spirit, you know, spiritually, and she had time and she knew. And that was for me a very glorious way to live this earth, you know. And I know that my, you know, my sister will live forever. Yeah. My prayer is that um, it's, I know it's not easy for Brother Dennis because uh, both of them, you know, they've been together for a long time. My prayer is that the Lord will comfort him, will strengthen him. Amen. And will help him, um, you know, that vacuum that has been created, that void, the Lord is going to fill it for him. And for the children too, God will comfort them, will strengthen them. And yeah. Our prayer is that we shall all run the race. And, um, you know, our sister is going to join the cloud of witnesses. So our prayer is that um, we shall also meet when the time comes, God will, you know, unite every one of us in that heavenly place. Praise yeah. God. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God, Brother Ben. Yeah, you brought out a few points there. Uh, for those of us that knew her and Dennis from years back, uh, their house was always open. They brought in many orphans, many uh, that were just strangers, sojourners, so to speak, traveling through. Uh, their house was always open. Uh, I believe uh, it's a real testimony of their hospitality and their love. And there seemed to be an agreement between uh, the two of them, between Dennis and Jeanette, that uh, they didn't need to so much consult with one another. Uh, if one felt the burden, they would simply invite someone to come. And the other one was in perfect understanding. Uh, so that's a beautiful attribute, amen, of them. And of course, you mentioned something else here that Jeanette was very bold. Uh, she would talk to the stranger on the street, I mean, and she would uh, get right to the point. You know, she would ask them, have you accepted the Lord? And if they say no, she would confront them and say, well, why not? You know, <laughs> be very direct. And because of that directness, she's had an open door with many and several she has led to the Lord. Uh, through that ability, um, something I think we all can learn from. Amen. Very, very precious gift in our sister. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Anyone else uh, remember? Amen. Praise God. Can you hear me, David? Yes, Emily. Yes. Yes. This is Amen. Emily. As one who was the recipient of their open home, Mm -hmm. Gary and I met Dennis and Jeanette and instantly, you know, I felt like I'd known her my whole life. She was so able to not know a stranger um, or, you know, that saying that she never knew a stranger because everyone was, she was able to touch someone's heart just so instantly because she was so approachable and, um, you know, easily befriending you. And, um, you know, you just felt like she was one of those people that, that God made just in a very specific way that you could talk about whatever the burden of your heart or what was going on in your life. And you, you know, you felt like it wouldn't be um, judged or, you know, you wouldn't be, somehow held in a critical light. Yeah. I think she had, you know, um, one of those abilities to touch the brokenhearted. She was able to touch the homeless. She was able to touch the down and outers. She was able to touch, you know, the up and outers. <laughs> she, she just had, you know, she didn't have fear of, 
of position or fear of rank in life. And, um, you know, God used her then for so many in so many ways. And I just loved sitting with Jeanette. Oh, she could make me laugh. And <laughs> she just had that ability to spin something uh, in a certain light to see the humor in it and um, lighten your heart. And, you know, there was such a, an ability in Dennis and Jeanette's home to uh, put your feet up and rest a while. And, um, you know, they, they, you just knew that Jeanette would give you, and probably she did to so many, you know, we have a saying in the States, especially in the Midwest, we would say, yes, they would give you the shirt off their back. Yes. And I just know that about Jeanette, that, you know, she, she was savvy. She had wisdom. She was able to um, cut to the quick. She was prophetic. Mm -hmm. She was discerning. And it all came in such a unique package of, um, you know, that God moved through her life probably for an unnumbered Amen. groups of, of people. So um, I considered her the sweetest of friends. And, you know, I, I love her. I love Dennis for the life. They're an example to many of being open handed with their um, life and generous beyond words. And, um, you know, I, I just, um, am so grateful that I had the honor of knowing her. Amen. 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 Yes. You mentioned her sense of humor, uh, which seems to run through the whole family. Her, her brothers is very similar, uh, very, very sharp wit, but also her mother, uh, Betty Delamater, who many of us know from up in the New York Schenectady Fellowship for many, many years. Uh, she was a part of that fellowship, well, until she really went up north and then uh, went home to be with the Lord. So she was a part of that group, uh, actually until she came down to Atlanta and joined with her, her family down there. But uh, you mentioned this sense of humor, and that was quite, quite uh, unique. Uh, I remember we were ministering a word and I was sharing on three David's uh, mighty men. He had, you know, a number of 30, but then there was three elite that were in David's army. And the first one, his name was Adino, A-D-I-N-O. And uh, I shared in the meeting, you know, the three names of David's three mighty men. And I said, if we named James, uh, Peter, and John, everybody would know that would have been Jesus's inner circle, but David had an inner circle. And I said, uh, do you know who these were? And I said, I don't know, you know. And she looked at us and in the, in the church, the fellowship there, and she said, I don't know. I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> so it shows you her quick wit, very sharp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to miss yeah. that. Yeah. Amen. Yes, we are. God. Yeah. Praise God. Well, Anyone else have a tribute or anything to share or anything to pray? Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Well, let us pray a prayer for, for Dennis. Amen. You know, you can imagine the roller coaster he's going to go through in the next days and weeks. So, amen. Brother Gary, would you lead us in prayer for Dennis and maybe his household? Mm -hmm. Amen. Sure. Hallelujah. Yeah, Lord, we're, we're just uh, stunned here and uh, things happen so quickly here. And Lord, we, uh, we just trust you in your sovereign will, Lord. And we resign ourselves to, to that, Lord, knowing you know what is best for each and every one of us, Lord. And we recognize also how uh, short life can be and that we're not promised tomorrow. But Lord, may it be a motivation for us in a good sense to press into you as never before and to take advantage of each day that you give to us, Lord, and, and the life and the health that we do have, Lord. We are so grateful and so thankful. 
And, and Lord, we want to uh, just uh, turn our attention to Dennis, especially, and to the Rapp family. Lord, we just ask, God, that you will move in a mighty way and, and just bathe them with your comfort, uh, with consoling them, and to uh, just minister peace to their heart, mind, and soul, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the Prince of Peace. And uh, I, I believe, Lord, you have already begun this with Dennis, Lord. And, and uh, you know, he'll go through different phases, Lord, I'm sure, of loneliness or of wondering. And, and Lord, we thank you, God, that in these type of situations, Lord, we are not alone, but we, you are with us always, and we pray, God, that he will just continually sense the presence of the Holy Spirit around him, about him, and holding him up in this time, Lord. And may you place around him family members and other brethren, Lord, that will be an encouragement to him as well, Lord, and to let him know that he is not alone. We praise you for that, Lord Jesus. Bless him, bless the rap household now, we pray. And uh, we just commit it and all things into your hands, Lord. And we give you praise for your sovereign will in your precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Praise in the name of the living God. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord God, we, we just bring our brother... Dennis before you, Lord. And Lord God, Lord, we know that things inside our hearts and minds, and, and Lord God, that Lord God, only you can 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 keep us and and Lord, only you can bring us up and through this situation, Lord, the times and what we're going through. So Lord God, we we we, we your word says, cast your cares upon you for you care for us. So, Lord God, we cast these cares of, uh, of Dennis right now, Lord God. Yeah. His heart, his mind, his very being, Lord God. And Lord God, to work out the things, Lord God, that would be on his heart and on his mind right now, Lord. Lord, mm -hmm. uh, to direct him, Lord God, to strengthen him, to, Lord God, that he can see, Lord God, to this day and the day forward, Lord God. That Lord God, that He can uh, take the times that Him and His wife Jeanette was, Lord God, the joy and all the things together, Lord, and put it all in perspective, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Lord God, to to bring it like a like a song, like a melody, Lord God, in His heart, Lord God. That Lord God, we know that there's a time of mourning, Lord God, but in mourning. Lord God, uh, there's a time of joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Let it be his portion, oh God. Let him hear from you, Lord God, from these times, Lord God. Lord, let not the enemy uh, strike against them and to think uh, of anything that would uh, bring his head down, Lord God. But Lord God, let him look unto the hill that comes with his help, Lord. His help coming from thee, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that this would be each one of the members of the family's portion, Lord. That they remember their uh, um, their wife, their, their their mother, and all the other uh, and all the family relatives, Lord. That sisters, uh, sisters and brothers, Lord God. Yes. Oh God, each one, Lord, would see and, and be able to uh, take in, Lord God, the very life that you give, Lord. The life, Lord God, that flows in that brings people and to restore and to strengthen and to give victory and encouragement, Lord God. Lord, we pray that encouragement would flow through the family, Lord God. And even those that they have um, taken in their homes, Lord, uh, children, Lord God, and those that remember, Lord God, we ask that you would bless them and they would, Lord God, be comforted, Lord, in this time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We all go through various seasons of change, seasons of life, Lord God. And our brother has abruptly entered a different, a new season 
in his chapter of life, Lord. Uh, Father, we just pray that you would comfort him through this. Normally, Lord God, there's seasons that gradually grow from one season to the next, but in this situation, it was an abrupt change. And, and we're just praying that you would move mightily on the Rapp household, uh, bring this family closer together in Christ than ever before. Uh, the two sons living at home with their father. We are praying that, Lord God, your presence, your anointing would fall upon that home, my God. And that, Father, there might be an exploration of the depths of God as never before, we pray. Lord, I pray for Dennis that his heart would be comforted, ministered to, Lord God, for surely you still have a plan, a destiny, and a purpose for him to fulfill Yes, and Father, Lord. we pray for these sons as well, Lord God, that each one uh, would grapple with the Lord, amen, and even wrestle with the Lord, but we know who will become the victor, amen. And we just pray that in their surrender to you, they will find the victory also in life, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you for the siblings. I know she prayed much. Uh, she has a sister, very much save Suzanne. Uh, but she's got brothers, Lord Jeff and Bill, Father, that she's longed to see come to know the Lord. And we just join with her in prayer yes. for the heavenly host to move on behalf of these siblings, Lord God, that they would indeed come to know you, we pray, in a deep and a fulfilling way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, thank you, thank you, O oh Lord God, for hearing these prayers today. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm just going to share a, a short word and let it take off from there. Amen. I've been uh, uh, pretty much before the Lord on something I think is very appropriate for this afternoon. And it's the word anointing, you know. Uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus or Yeshua means savior, deliverer, and Christ, you know, it wasn't his last name, amen. He didn't come from Joseph Christ or Mary Christ, you know. Christ was a name given to him of God, which means the anointed one or the anointing. So when we read about Christ, amen, Christ means the anointing. So we should know a little bit more about anointing. I think we use it rather freely, uh, openly, but let's look at some of the depth in the scripture concerning anointing, amen. Uh, the scripture in Matthew 24 says, in the end days, uh, false Christ will arise. Hmm. Uh, well, we know there have been many that have come and said, I am Jesus Christ, but it's something higher than that, brethren, amen. We know many have been fooled by that, but uh, there's another level of deception here. And Christ, if Christ means, which it does, anointing, there are false anointings out there. And we have to discern the true anointing versus the anointing that the enemy has, false anointings, and the anointings that even man has. Charisma, you know, an attraction to a person. Amen. But that cannot replace the true anointing of God. So I want to turn, turn with me. Uh, Let's go to Exodus, and let's look at this a little bit further. Exodus chapter 30. Exodus 30 and verse, we'll start in verse 22. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, a hin, and they're estimating a hin was perhaps about a gallon. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy anointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary, it shall be 
a holy anointing oil. Amen. Thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table and all his vessels, and the lampstand, translated here, King James candlestick, but should be lampstand, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the laver and his foot. And I'm going to stop right there, verse 28. I'll read verse 29 in a moment. Um, the anointing oil had an exact compound, exact composition. You know, when the pharmacist goes to work and puts together various ingredients, elements together, it has to be an exact composition. But even more so, this is spelled out in the scripture here, an exact composition. So what is our takeaway from this in the Old Testament? It's saying there is an exact composition that is the anointing of God. And if it's off a certain ingredient, even a certain amount of that ingredient, it does not pass the test in the Old Testament being the holy anointing oil. Could not fit because it has to be an exact compound. For you and I, the takeaway is there's a true anointing of God. Amen. And if you've tasted of it and you have bathed yourself in it and you continue to drink of that water and grow and grow in him, amen, you will recognize every false teaching, false anointing, amen. Even when it looks like it's all God, it might not be at all. And so I've had a lot of experience as far as going into various churches, uh, being invited by uh, various uh, brethren, elders sometimes in the church asking, would you come? Would you listen to this meeting tonight and listen to this minister? And brother, we just have to have an ear tuned to the Lord. Amen. We just have to be clued into the Lord to hear the voice of God and to discern that which is true of the Lord and that which is not true. So Matthew 24, when it talks about false Christ, it's talking about false anointings and we can't be fooled. We have to pray for absolute pure discernment from the Lord, amen. Uh, I remember a time a brother asked me to join him, come to a church service. And he said, this minister has been here from out of town uh, for several nights and he's closing up here in the next few nights, but he wanted me to come. Amen. And I remember uh, one of the aspects that he brought, uh, he said, you know, I am here to minister out of Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. He said, the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And he closed his Bible and he says, and I'm here to minister the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Holy Ghost to you. And I thought to myself, oh boy, where are we going with this? You know. Uh, so before long, you know, he had the place rolling in what they call holy laughter, people rolling in the aisles. Uh, people came forward and he prayed for certain ones. And I actually saw the platform turn into almost a circus event where uh, people's elbows were stuck to the floor and they could not get their elbow free. And uh, the minister said, you can try, but you won't get free. He said, God is locking your elbow to the floor. And he said, you're just resisting God. You know. Well, we saw many, many uh, false things happening. People with their uh, hands glued to their nose. They couldn't get them free. Their finger stuck in their ear. And brother, I pray that we would discern that this has nothing to do with God. Amen. As a matter of fact, it's a display of the powers of darkness, amen, right in the churches. But it revealed to me there's lack of discernment, and we really need to be discerning. Uh, we shouldn't be fooled by this level, nor any level. As we move higher and higher in God, the deception will be greater and greater to the point that Jesus said, if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived, amen. And that word elect, is eklektos in the Greek. It's not church. It's not ecclesia. It's eklektos. The called out of the called out is the definition of eklektos. So you could say even his disciples around him were part of the eklektos. Amen. 
And so God is calling us as the very elect. But if it were possible, the Lord is saying the deception is so great. Brethren, let's be careful today. Let's be discerning today. Don't believe everything that comes across the television or the radio waves. Much of that today is great deception. And they can do many, many things with cameras today that make it look very real and it's not real at all. Uh, so I think God is calling us up to a much higher level in him because he's given us all things to overcome. He's given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us the spirit of Christ and he's given us the blood of Jesus Christ to conquer and to destroy every work of darkness. So the anointing oil here had to be an exact composition. And my counsel to you and to myself is to continually bathe yourself in the word of God, in prayer, seeking the Lord out of a sincere heart, amen. Asking the Lord to cleanse the heart, that it's a pure heart seeking him, amen. Coming after him, desiring only him, praise God. And also listening to that which is true anointed ministry. God deliver us from false anointings, amen. Television preachers and evangelists and things. It says, know them that labor among you. You should know those people, praise God. Know their background, know where they're coming from. It's not by their gifts we're to judge, but by their fruit. The word of God encourages us to be fruit inspectors, inspect their lives for the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, amen, temperance, of which there is no law. These, amen, we should see the fruit. But oftentimes uh, we're in the Christian world fooled by giftings, amen. If we have a powerful gifting of healing, uh, the church is full. People are coming for one reason and one reason only. And this should not be. Uh, that should be just a simple by byproduct of the fruit of the spirit. So praise God. So turn with me back to Exodus chapter 29, just one chapter back. And very powerful passage of scripture here. Amen. Verse 35 of chapter 29 of Exodus. And thus shalt thou do unto Aaron and to his sons, according to all things which I have commanded thee, seven days shalt thou consecrate them. And thou shalt offer every day a bullock for a sin offering, for an atonement, and thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou hast made an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it. Seven days thou shalt make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it, and it shall be an altar most holy. Whatsoever touches the altar shall be holy. Brother, what a powerful passage of scripture. Amen. As being led by the Spirit of God, this altar was sanctified, it was cleansed, and it was finally anointed with oil, that whatsoever touched the altar became holy. We see the power of the Spirit in this. And if ever we have needed the strength and the power of God Almighty, we need it now for what's coming, what's on the horizon, what we have need of in our lives to be true overcomers. The power of God is coming. We have heard, amen, dudamus, amen, shared many times the word where we get the word dynamite from, amen, power, amen. Thank God for the power. It says, I have given you all power over all the power of the enemy. But that word, first power is really authority, amen, exousia. I have given you the exousia authority over all the power, deutimus, of the enemy. We're not denying that the enemy has power, but we have authority. We have been sent of God. We have been anointed of God to, to preach the gospel. And the enemy cannot prevail against this. Though he has power, we have authority. And authority always trumps power. And in this passage of scripture, the altar becomes holy. So we see the principle of the laying on of hands right here, amen. Lay hands of the sick and that which you have given to you of God, you can impart to someone else 
and they shall be healed. Amen. So we're believing the principles of God that that which God calls for, that which God commissions, we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It says lay hands, amen. Not just one hand, but both hands. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So we see a principle of God that when it's led by the Holy Spirit, amen, transformation will take place, amen. It's, it's powerful, brother. It can transfer life where death has otherwise been operating. And so we see a principle here of the laying on of hands. And with every principle in God, there's also the other side, the other part of the room that you're being brought into. And uh, we know that in prophecy, prophecy, there's a fine line between prophecy and you can cross a line into divination. And so you have to keep your life clean, pure, walking before the Lord, or those that even have that prophetic edge, that gifting, can slide, can slip into divination. So you got both the positive and the negative with the laying on of hands. In the New Testament, it says, lay hands suddenly on no man and be not a partaker of another man's sins. So if you're not led by the Lord, you can lay hands, but the exact opposite can happen. The sins of that person can come upon you and can contaminate you. And so that's why the scripture always speaks of the laying on of hands in regards to mature ones, elders, uh, leaders that have enough stock of the Lord and are moving in the unction, the anointing of God, that as they move forward whatsoever, amen, they touch like the altar, it becomes holy, praise God. So we see a principle here in the anointing, that altar was anointed. And that's what we want to just briefly talk about today. I don't think we'll cover the whole ground, that's for sure. But anointing is very key today, amen. And the anointing of God resting. It says in the New Testament, we can go there, amen, for a moment. Let's go to the New Testament, and it's in the book of, amen, Acts chapter 10. Let's look at that. New Testament, Acts chapter 10. And verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost. Look at those words. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. If the Lord had to be anointed, how much more so do we need to be anointed? And there is an anointing for service in the Lord. The Lord gives you a specific direction, purpose to perform. The anointing rests upon you to perform that specific task, that specific uh, adventure in the Lord to perform it. Amen. God anoints you for this. And that's a specific task and purpose. And that's mentioned in scripture. But then there's also an anointing that abides, that it stays with you. Uh, let's, let's read that one. That's in 1 John. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. Notice that word abideth. It continually stays with you. Brother, we are looking for a greater outpouring of God's spirit. We are looking for an anointing to come upon the people of God, to rest upon mm -hmm. you and I for purpose, mm -hmm. for the purpose of destiny in Christ. Mm -hmm. We need this anointing. Amen, brother. We need this anointing that abides, that abides within you. Notice that it abides. It's, it's forever dwelling. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now I've seen this passage of scripture twisted and turned around. It says, well, I can hear from God only. I don't need anyone else. I don't need other ministries, amen, because of this scripture. No, that's not 
what this passage of scripture is relating. Amen. That's a twist. It's saying you have an abiding anointing within you. And within you, yes, you can pray. Yes, you can read the scriptures. You can hear the voice of God, but that's not the only way. Amen. You also have an anointing that abides within you that discerns when you hear truth out there in the ministries, out there in the body of Christ. And if you're really discerning and careful, you can even hear the voice of God out there in the world. Amen. God will use the world to teach us and to instruct us. We can even learn. The scripture says that the wise man can even learn from the fool. Amen. You, you learn what not to do. So we see that there's an anointing that abides, brethren. And Jesus Christ himself was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. How much more do we need to be anointed? Hallelujah. Amen. King David was anointed three times in his lifetime. He, he was anointed by Samuel. The oil was poured upon him. And I was looking at the, this this morning. Let us turn there for a moment. Let us see something in the principles of God concerning the anointing. First, Samuel. And it's of the familiar chapter, chapter 16, where our King David took down Goliath. But it's a beautiful passage right here. When Saul, well, we know Saul was anointed also of Samuel, but Samuel was told of the Lord. Amen. Let's read this, chapter 16 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. And I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And we know the story, how all the sons of Jesse were paraded past Samuel. And Samuel was directed of God not to anoint one of those sons. And he said, don't you have still any more sons? And he said, yes, but he's out with the sheepfold. Amen. And Samuel called for him. Amen. And verse 12 of chapter 16, 1 Samuel. And he sent and he brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Glory to God. Beautiful picture here of a man directed of God to bring a horn full of oil, which is representative of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. And he poured the oil upon David and he became, amen, not at the moment, he did not become king of Israel at that moment, but he was anointed of the Lord to one day fall into that position. So that's a very interesting point to keep in mind, that he was anointed not that specific moment as king, but he was anointed for the battle that was before him, and the spirit of the Lord was upon him, and it says he moved very, very wisely in all of his activities. Amen. But notice. Notice this, often is missed is verse 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. There's a, a very powerful lesson and principle for us. We know Saul was anointed of Samuel to be king over Israel. And he carried that anointing and David all the days of his life said, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. Even when he pursued him, Saul pursued David, would have tried to kill him, would have taken that opportunity to have done that, but David would not retaliate. He said, I will not come against the Lord's anointed. He recognized that he was anointed of God. Amen. 
there might be anointed ministries that you come in contact with, that you uh, see on television, radio, amen. And they may be going another direction. They may be going south, as we say. They may be going wayward. But there's a key here, and it says that David would not touch the Lord's anointed. So we need to be even careful, those that are anointed, though they may be going astray, to be mindful, prayerful, careful uh, of the words that we speak and the things directed even at them, even if we see them going astray. Our hearts should be as King David, praying for those, praying for those that are astray, praying for those that were one time anointed of the Lord. There have been many anointed of the Lord and have strayed away. Uh, so our hearts have to be right towards the Lord and pray for those that are moving astray, that God perhaps will somehow bring them back in line and their hearts would be turned back to the Lord and God would correct their course of direction. But look at this now, amen, this principle here. There was the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and it came upon King David. It was a new generation. A new kingdom was being ushered in. The kingdom of Saul was decreasing, but the kingdom of David was arising. And there was a fresh anointing. We can read it in the scripture. There's a fresh oil, amen, fresh oil, a new anointing, a fresh anointing falling. Brethren, this is the word for this hour for us. There's a fresh anointing falling on a new generation of a King David type of people that are moving forward. And the kingdom of Saul is fading away. Amen. The anointing is lifting. And notice when the anointing lifted and the spirit of the Lord lifted off of Saul, what happened? He opened himself up for an evil spirit to come and trouble him. Amen. And it says, if you read further on, even his servants noticed it. They said an evil spirit troubles Saul. Let us call for a minstrel. Let us call for someone that can play and bring the anointing of God back. Bring the spirit of the Lord back. Amen. And it did for a short season. Uh, but Saul would eventually go back into his rebellion. And we know he went further and further into rebellion. Even into witchcraft. Uh, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Uh, so we see that. And we see many, many ministries that were anointed for battle. Anointed to go forth. Are going astray. And you just can't go astray. For very long before it has repercussions. It, it has situations that accumulate that will cause you, as Saul did, to go further, further, and further away from God, further into darkness. The thinking, your thinking even is clouded. Uh, you move into a realm of deception. The scripture says, if you have not a love for the truth, God will send. Amen. This isn't the devil now. God will send strong delusion that they would believe a lie. Amen. That's a perfect delusion. If it's sent of God, there's no way out. The only way out is repentance and a love to be placed back in your heart for truth. And that's what we pray for those that have gone astray. But praise God, brethren. Amen. King David was anointed for battle. He took down Goliath. He had taken down the lion and the bear. But now he took down mighty Goliath and he began to pursue the Lord. It says he was a man after God's own heart and God anointed him, anointed him for battle. Praise God. Amen. Anointed him. The spirit of the Lord came upon him. He was able to take down Goliath. And eventually he'd be anointed again as king over Judah. And then finally his third anointing would be he'd be anointed as king over Israel, all 12 tribes would be united under King David. Brethren, this is a word for you and I today. There's an anointing falling, amen. We are awaiting an anointing. And this anointing, it breaks every yoke. Let's read that together. That's Isaiah, amen. Old Testament again, Isaiah, amen. Chapter 10. And we need the true anointing of God, amen. The exact composition, the true, the true movement of God's spirit, that anointing to fall upon us, and we need this fresh oil. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. 
And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Oh, we are waiting on the anointing, brethren. Praise God. The anointing of God to break the yoke of the enemy that is fast encroaching, not, not only the world, but fast encroaching upon the church. Every avenue, we can see stoppages. We can see blockages. We can see barriers. But it should just really encourage us to higher ground. Encourage us to know that God has something very unique, very special for this time and this hour. And we are believing God for that anointing. Amen. That anointing that breaks every yoke, that destroys the yoke. Amen. And we're believing, brethren, that this anointing will rest upon you and upon I. It will come in such strength and magnitude to perform whatever is the purpose of God. Because we are children of destiny. Amen. Children of destiny. Glory to God. Uh, we could go through many passages of scripture where it talks about uh, the priest and the sons. They were anointed and they were anointed with the blood and then anointed with the oil. And there's a few passages of scripture that talks about the priest right ear, amen, being anointed with the blood and then the oil, the right thumb and the right big toe anointed again with the blood and with the oil. It has to be that order. Brethren, amen. The anointing of God will not fall where the blood has not sanctified, where the blood has not cleansed. The blood is applied first, and we are talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Old Testament typology, New Testament is the reality of the blood of Jesus Christ, and that blood, that powerful, efficacious blood. Amen working continuously makes way for the anointing to fall and the Holy Spirit to fall. Glory to God. Amen. That anointing cannot fall without the blood. So the two are as one. It's a combination. It's a one-two punch. Amen. And we need, and we, we need the blood and we need the oil of the Holy Spirit falling upon us afresh and anew. Glory to God. Let, let's look at that one scripture there, amen, in Psalm 92. I mentioned it a couple times here. Let's look at that. Psalm 92 and verse 10. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Glory to God. There is fresh oil, brethren, for you and I an anointing to do the service of the Lord. Whatever God has called you to do, the anointing must accompany. The anointing, as we could read in the Old Testament, could never fall on the flesh. So it can never fall upon a fleshly activity, a fleshly action. Sometimes we know it. We're moving outside of God. Other times we're not so sure. And God is letting us know, I cannot anoint a fleshly operation. He can only anoint that which has purpose in him, designed of him, and we're directed of him, moving in accordance with him, the anointing will fall. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I remember being in a meeting years ago, and we were in this meeting, and a brother from America was ministering. And I met him in the afternoon, and they were overjoyed that they had several there, but two from America and this man I had never met. And he was ministering that night. Amen. But I began to see in his operation uh, something foreign to what we would bear witness with as far as the anointing of God. He was moving in a supernatural realm, guaranteed, but it wasn't the spirit of the Lord. And so I began to pray for him amen, and pray. And brethren, I don't care if you're in a congregation of 500, 5,000. When you discern something going awry, something going wrong, begin to look to the Lord. Have compassion on the people. They deserve good feeding. They deserve good food. 
Begin to pray when you see something astray, something not of the anointing of God falling upon the people of God. You have strength, you have power, you have the unction to pray. You pray. And so I began to pray for this man. And sometimes uh, that minister knows what he's moving in is not God. He's an agent of the enemy. Sometimes they even know it. They're moving in realms of deception. It could be for the love of money. It could be for some other purpose to divert the people of God for the plan of Satan has infiltrated their minds, whatever reason, amen. But sometimes the minister doesn't even know that what he's moving in is not the Lord. And in this case, I began to pray for him and I saw his diminishing power. He, he didn't have the strength and he couldn't figure out what was happening. He normally moved in prophetic ways and moved in a forecasting, but all that was beginning to be shut down. And at one moment, he said, well, I'm going to ask this other brother from America to come up and finish the meeting, Amen. which I did. Amen. But I knew he didn't know because had he known, he would have never called me up. Never. So we can see that sometimes the people of God are even deceived. They're turned away. Amen. They don't even know it. Other times they do know it. But God wants us to have a fresh discernment fresh oil to discern the true anointing of God, because the anointing, as we read here, breaks every yoke. It destroys the yoke. And brethren, there's a fresh anointing falling on the people of God. Don't ever think that God has left us out to pasture, left us astray, that he doesn't know what's transpiring in the world today as fast as things are moving, and things are moving very quickly on every front. We have a God that discerns and gives us discernment Amen. for the Amen. word of God. Amen. Is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the divided asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. God will give us perfect discernment. Amen. Mm -hmm. the spirit of the Lord will fall upon us, and the anointing will accompany, and the anointing will break the yoke. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Brethren. There's so much here. Amen. I just felt to just touch on this tonight. The anointing of God. We're praying for this fresh oil to fall upon the people of God. We need it. Amen. We need it. Amen. As Sister Mavis would used to say, she said, if the anointing's not there, don't move. Don't move forward. But when the anointing falls, charge. Go forward. And that's a good word for us. With the anointing, we can do all things. Amen. Whatever Christ has directed us to do, the anointing will be there. Amen. So let us remember there have been those that have gone astray. Amen. But pray for them that they be righted in their pathway towards the Lord. Uh, there's a tremendous mixture out there in Christianity today. Uh, some grasping uh, the end time kingdom word, and yet they've got various twists and turns, things that are running contrary to the Lord, into the word of God. Amen. Pray for them. Pray that God write their walk. Make it straight and perfect. Make it, Lord God, as you would have them to be, not falling to the left, not falling to the right, not going astray, but walking in perfect discernment. God, we're just praying for this, for us, your people. Father, we pray today, amen, that fresh oil would fall upon us, mm. a fresh anointing, we are sensing, feeling this is the heartbeat of God for this hour. Lord, we know we need it. We need it. And Father, we're praying for fresh oil to fall upon us, your people, the anointing of God that destroys every yoke, every yoke upon us. And then we can pray for others that the yokes that are upon them would be destroyed and broken. God, help us, Lord God, to be a people that are humble before you, seeking you for wisdom, insight, continually looking to you for discernment. God, we need discernment today more than ever before. Yes, Lord. Father, we don't want to be taken astray. We don't want to go, Lord God. Uh, the enemy would just love to just twist and turn and get us off track, even one inch off a track. 
could lead to miles and miles away as we continue to walk down that pathway. So Lord, we're praying, keep us on the straight and the narrow, we pray. Guide us by your spirit. And we pray for this fresh anointing. We know there's an anointing coming, an anointing falling, mm. amen. an anointing to do thy will, thy purpose, thy plan. And Lord, you use the weakest vessels to confound even the strength of man. Father, we're praying, God, that we would not look at our own frailty, not look at our own troubled, maybe uh, frail self, but Lord, we would seek you, that Lord, we believe your word above our own selves, what we see with our own eyes. Help us to walk by faith and not by our own natural sight. Help us, Lord God, to believe your word, that there's a fresh anointing falling, a fresh anointing coming, an anointing that will deliver, an anointing to preach the gospel, an anointing to set the captives free, an anointing to open the prison doors. Amen. That Lord God, your people, the people of God would be free, free under your headship, we pray. God, we pray for the anointing of God. We, we sense such a strength here in the spirit to pray that the anointing of God would fall upon this, your people, oh, Lord God. And that anointing would lead us and that anointing would guide us and the anointing would accompany the task that is set before us because we are children of purpose and children of destiny, oh God, that we will perform that which you called us to perform and the anointing would break every yoke in the name of Jesus. Break every yoke today, Lord God. Uh, some of us, we've been struggling for years, decades, with a certain limp, a certain walk that hinders us, whether it be condemnation, uh, whether it be something else invading our soul of unforgiveness or bitterness. Father, we're praying, write that in the name of the Lord. Yes. God, break every yoke, we pray that the anointing of God could fall upon us, rest upon us, and we can move forward with the unction and the anointing of God. Father, we pray for our sister Linda today. Lord God, she's been suffering. She's been struggling. But Lord, she's with us. Amen. Amen. Testimony today of the Lord speaking to her heart to not lose track of the faith in the foundation that she has in Christ. Father, we pray and stand with our sister today, Lord God. The enemy's been throwing everything at her. He can possibly throw at her, amen. The Lord God, the infirmities, amen, of the enemy is being thrown against her, even through sickness, disease. Father, we pray and reverse it by the blood of Jesus amen. Christ today. Pray the anointing of God fall upon our sister, that Lord should be made every whit whole to do your service, to do thy will. Lord God, in order for her to do the things you've called her to do, she must be well. Father, anoint her, quicken her by the spirit, we pray, and let the healing of God fall upon her. It said, if any are sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. And the elders are assembled right here, right now. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let them lay hands on the sick. Amen. And they shall recover, the scripture says. Father, by the word of the Lord, we are praying right now for our sister, Linda, yeah. everyone on this call, hands are raised. We are praying and we are laying hands on our sister, Linda, yeah. right now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. God, let the healing virtue and the anointing of God fall upon our sister afresh and anew. My God, my God, hallelujah. And we pray if there be any sin, it would be forgiven, Lord God. And it be dismissed and discharged. Yes. And the healing virtue of God will fall upon our sister. Following your word, that the oil, the Holy Spirit, the anointing oil of God will rest upon her. Father, we can't be there naturally. We can't be there physically, but we are there spiritually right now, laying hands on our sister. Brother Glenn, you just lay hands on your wife right now as we're praying for her. Both hands. Amen. Lay hands on our sister in Jesus' name. We speak life. Amen. We speak life and liberty, healing, and the virtue power of God to rest upon our sister. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, we see even 
things vanishing right now in the spirit realm. Glory to God. E even thoughts, Lord God, are being discharged that are not of you. Even things that have been transmitted to her in the times past, even actions, words spoken against her. In the name of Jesus, I see them discharged. Discharged right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. We pray for our sister, Lord God, the holy anointing oil, that perfect ointment, Lord God, will be upon our sister right now in Jesus' name we pray. Glory to God. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. Amen, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Just moved by the Spirit, brethren. Lord, Lord you're, yes. we receive this word, and this word is not a, a word of, uh, of thousands of years ago, but this word is a word of what you're wanting to do for each one of us today. Amen. And so Lord, we receive that anointing of the mm. Holy Spirit yes. upon us this day. And Lord, whatever our need is, Lord, we pray God that that anointing would break the yoke, mm -hmm. would supply the need, would uh, impart to us that which is needed, God. Hallelujah. Whether it be healing or a word or direction, whatever it is, Lord, we receive it. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, for it. As we pray for Linda, Lord, we are praying for each and every one of us. And Amen. we receive that special anointing. In Jesus' name, we believe it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. If there's anyone else on this call, I, I can't see all that are on the call, but anyone here that wants to step into that circle, uh, the anointing is here today. Amen. And when the anointing is moving, amen, you want to strike while the iron is hot, you could step into that circle. We'll pray for you. Or if you want to be a point of contact for someone else that needs prayer, we're here to pray with you. Mm -hmm. Um, for Alex's foot, um, he received the x-ray on Friday, but we know that um, Jesus is the healer. Amen. Amen. Father, we are just putting Alex right in the midst of us right now. Amen. Yes, Lord, we are there by the spirit. It's as uh -huh. strong as if we were there right physically. Yes. In the oh, shit. We just surround him right now in the name of Jesus. Um, oh, let us just pray, brethren. Amen. Let us just pray for our other right now. Jesus, Jesus. Oh God, minister your life and your healing power to our brother now. Man. Yes. Now, quickly now, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray. The anointing, your word says, breaks the yoke. Amen. It destroys the yoke. We are praying for our brother today that there's been a yoke of the enemy some place on our brother's foot in the name of Jesus. Father, we are breaking that yoke in the yeah. name of the Lord yeah. by the anointing that breaks the yoke. In Jesus' name, we speak life, we speak healing, we speak vitality to his bone system, his structure, yes. his ligaments, his tendons. In the name of the Lord, we speak yes. life, 
death cannot prevail. Life mm. must swallow up death by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God, we pray Thank for Jesus. healing for our brother, for his walk in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Spiritual walk. We are praying God. The tour is one, and we're praying God. He would be made every whit whole by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Glory. God. Praise Glory. God. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother yeah. Alex, what, what foot What foot is that? The left or right? The right foot. The right foot. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Lord God. Lord, we, Lord God, we, can, we know that we walk, Lord God. We need two feet to walk. Yes, sir. Lord God. We need the word and the spirit, Lord God. Yes. And Lord God, we speak the spirit of the living God, mm -hmm. hallelujah, to be upon him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Lord God. Not that, Lord God, that he's capable, able to do the things, the yes. plan and the purpose yes. that you have purposed him to do, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Lord God, that he be able to walk. He yeah, have the strength. And Lord God, he'll move by the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. And he'll move by the word, the word. Hallelujah. The word in the spirit, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord, we pray, oh God, that Lord God, there was nothing that would be able to uh, hinder him. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Lord God, you are his strength. You are, you are his everything, Lord God. Yes, yes. Lord God, he would turn to you, Lord God. He would trust you. Hallelujah, Lord, as he walks this out, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you break every yoke and every mm -hmm. bondage and every hindrance. Yes. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah, yes. Lord, like you said to um, mm -hmm. the man that was uh, 18 years, he was not able to walk. You said to take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Let this be his portion right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Yes. That's the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if nobody else will take advantage of this, I'm going to, and I'm just going to ask for prayer again uh, for this, what they say might be arthritis in my hips and back, possibly even my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's not severe, but, uh, you know, it bothers me every day. Amen. So I'm just going to ask the body to pray for me, for God to deliver me. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, God has delivered me miraculously, as you know, from cancer yes. and, uh, other ailments. So there's no question he can do this. And so I, I want to take advantage of it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Father, we just surround our brother right now. Lord God, he's not the only one. Lord, it's a plague that plagues the body. Amen. Arthritis, Lord. Father, sometimes these natural things are hinged in spiritual things. Lord, we, we pray, God, that any spiritual attachment to unforgiveness, Lord God, or bitterness, Lord God, we're just praying right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we forgive. We forgive all who have ever trespassed against us. We forgive we own no, not even one ounce of bitterness. Lord, we Hallelujah. pray My God. for even those that have trespassed against us. We you, pray Jesus. for those that have even hurt us, Lord God, even sometimes Thank intentionally. Jesus. Father, we pray right now forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Yes, bitterness. Mm -hmm. Bitterness would be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bitterness, Hallelujah. Apple, we pray. Glory to God. Thank we have enough Jesus. of love in our hearts because you have given us the spirit of love, Lord God, that shed abroad in our hearts 
Father, we pray, God, utterly destroy this Thank thing you, called Jesus. arthritis in Jesus' name. Lord Amen. God, we pray, utterly, completely destroy it from your people that we be free in movement, Lord God, without the pain, Lord God, in our joints and our ligaments. Lord, we just quoted the scripture. The word of God is quick. It's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sun or soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow. We are speaking oh life to the joints and the marrow right now. In the Hallelujah. Name of the Lord. Let the word of God penetrate. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Dislodge every arthritic action, every arthritic restraint from movement in the name of the Lord and every pain associated with it in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank Glory you, Jesus. God. Thank you. We're man. all believing victory. Amen. For this. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we just believe in that word. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we are believing that this thing is rooted out. That this mm. arthritis will not uh, uh, be able to. Um, accomplish or be complete. Lord, we curse it by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are yes. rooted by the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That Lord God, that our brother Gary, our Lord God, would uh, have a, a, a good report. A yes. good report. Amen. And Lord God, that would be a testimony to others that are, that are yes. dealing with this arthritis. Hallelujah. Amen. That it yes. would not only uh, be um, a healing and deliverance for him, Mm -hmm. Lord God, it would flow to others, oh God. Hallelujah. That word would go forth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Oh, that anointing, that, that deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. You are setting your people free, Lord. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. Lord. We have used our brother for a point of contact. Yes. Hallelujah. This thing, Lord God, that it would not uh, um, be uh, um, a hindrance to your people, to your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we sever from it that Lord God, you desire your people to be able to function. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, to function in the name of the living God, to function, mm -hmm. to be able to operate, to be able to move Amen. freely. Hallelujah. The joints, yeah. the, the legs, the arms, be able to move as like the body, the body of Christ, able to move. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That Lord God, that your people will flow. Hallelujah, move our Lord God, according to your word. Hallelujah, Lord God, that you deliver from every infirmity, every yeah. um, a sickness and every disease, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you have done and mm -hmm. what you're doing and what you're going to do, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Yes, man. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 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 You know, pain is an indicator something's wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. In, in this situation, you know, Gary, I, I understand that pain very, very well as well. But, you know, it's inflammation. Mm -hmm. That's what it is, you know, in the joint. Yeah. You know, God, give us wisdom today. Amen. To know how to treat the temple of God, the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And give us an understanding as to how to deal with this arthritis. Yes. Father, we thank you today for the oil. Amen. That lubricates even the joints. Yes. Father, today we're asking for healing. Mm -hmm. But we're also asking for wisdom to maintain the temple of God. Mm -hmm. Father, Amen. by way of nutrition, by way of, uh, uh, of um, herbal remedies, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. God, whatever, whatever it is, there is a wisdom for Amen. the people of God to be able to manage these things, even those things that are relating to the temple of God, which we are. Yes. Father, there is a, there's a need for an awareness. 
Mm-hmm. And then there's also a need for the strength to, to perform and to act and, and to do the thing that we know to do. Mm-hmm. Father, right. there is that. We know some we know some of this stuff and we just don't do it. God, I'm asking you to wake us up today because Amen. we do need our strength. We do need our vitality. We do need the the uh, all of our facility operating in peak performance mode for the days that are ahead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh God. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Uh, God. Brother John. I feel this is uh, I don't know, you know. As you were speaking these words, I feel this is something that uh, we really should really be looking at. Uh, what God is speaking to our hearts now about the things that we do uh, spiritually and naturally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what uh, um, the things that maybe we can, uh, uh, that maybe we overlooked, or maybe we don't even so. I'm I'm agreeing with you, and I want to, the Lord to really just speak to us, um, Lord God, Hallelujah, Lord God, yeah. that we can hear, Lord. This is a word, that, this word you're speaking to our hearts now, Lord God, that Lord God, that we would acknowledge you in all our ways, Lord. Yes. That Lord God, the things that maybe we don't see or don't understand about the things that we're this this life of uh, uh, naturally or. or or things that uh, you're speaking to us mm-hmm. in our hearts, mm-hmm. Lord God, that Lord, there be a quickening. Hallelujah, Lord God. That Lord God, that we would know and we would do it, Lord God. Not only that we would uh, know it and that uh, you would speak to our hearts, Lord God, but Lord God, we pray that we would walk in that obedience, Lord God. Yes. That yes. obedience, Lord, because Lord, yeah. we yeah. need yeah. that anointing. And, and as Brother David has shared earlier, Lord God, we need to... Uh, that blood, the blood to cleanse us, hallelujah, mm-hmm. before we have that anointing. So Lord, we are praying, oh God, that those things that that we have some trouble with, or things that we are not aware of, Lord God, that Lord God, that our hearts be open up and that we would move into righteousness, Lord God. Yeah. You want us to be in right standards with you in this hour, Lord God. Yeah. So Lord, show us the way and Lord God, and that we would walk in it, that we would walk in it, Lord God, mm-hmm. that Lord God, this destination that someone spoke of early, this destiny that we have, yeah. Lord God, this destiny to mm-hmm. be, Lord God, a people in a place, Lord, that destiny is is the is Mount Zion, Lord, Amen. and Lord, we need to walk it out. We need to have our feet shotted. We need to have our feet washed, and we need to have our feet purged. Hallelujah. We need that. We need that, Lord God. We need that operation to be working in us, Lord God, that we would know and we would seek you until we uh, and, and seek you until we find. Knock until and the door is open that we can know, Lord God, what you're doing and move yeah. in. Lord. Thank yeah. you, Father. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. To continue along that line. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, identify pain as an identifier. Yes. Um, it, it's a, it's a, a function of the body. It's a it, it's a uh, an indicator that something is wrong. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I've I've been wrestling with um, Linda. I love you so much. Um, I, I, I hate to see you suffering. It, it, it just, you know, it troubles my heart to see you suffering. But, I, I, you know, and I, I, part of my wrestling is, is that I don't know to say, thus say it the Lord. I don't know to say that. I don't have that kind of certainty. But when, when we were praying for you, I really felt like there was something familiar uh, about this condition. There was something generational about this condition. And, and I mean, I don't even know really what the condition is. I, 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 judging by the cushion on your back, I'm assuming that there perhaps is something with the back again, you know, I don't know. 
but the thing is, is that if we have in, in this, I, in this particular, uh, under this anointing, under this, uh, under this, uh, this understand this environment that we're in. Yes. Right now, today. Amen. You, you I would, I would just say, let's us ask God, Father. Amen. Give us wisdom. Give us discernment. Give us yeah. understanding. If the if the root, so hmm. often we put the band aid on the on the surface of the problem, and we never get to the root of the matter. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, Father, I'm asking you today. Yeah. I cut off every curse that was ever spoken, not only against Linda, but against the 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 whole of the family. Yes. Amen. Yes. Father, I, I don't know where where the, the root of this thing is, except that I know you do. Mm. And I'm asking you to, to speak to Glenn and to Linda. Thank you, Jesus. Father, give them discernment. Give Thank them you. an understanding as to how to pray. And if they don't know how to pray, to pray in the spirit until there's a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, I'm just asking you to Jesus. give us wisdom today. Thank you, Jesus. We Father, for Brother Alex, when yeah. I hear something about the foot having a problem, I got to ask myself what's going on with the walk. Mm -hmm. You, you know, you, God, give us discernment yes, Lord. today. Help yeah. us to understand what our need is and then empower us to do the thing that we know to do. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, help us. Yes, help Lord. us, Lord. Help us today. We need wisdom. We need understanding. We need a, a discernment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Oh, yeah. Thank Hallelujah. You, Father, mm -hmm. we pray for our brother Jerry Mullaney today. Yes. Amen. God, oh, God. God, I, I, I'm just, I, I would ask you, God, to break the circle of confusion mm -hmm. and, and, and this roller coaster ride that he's on. Father, that you would that, that you would bring clarity to the doctors, that you would bring somebody, if, the, if there's not somebody there to anoint, then bring that anointed person into the situation yes. and, and, and let them come with wisdom and, and, and clarity. Amen. Let them minister to this situation of the ble internal bleeding. Mm -hmm. God, pints after pints of blood. Lord, please, Lord. Mm -hmm. We're asking you to cut this thing short and minister to our brother healing. And, 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 and even now, God, we loose the powers of heaven, even Amen. those ministering angels that would go forth and minister. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Amen. angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him. Amen. Father, I, Diana as well, she's suffering just as, um, I don't know that it's as much, but she's suffering in this situation. God, we remember Diana to you today. God, they said in a written text, they said that they were living off of prayer, the prayer of the body of Christ. Father, I believe that. And we Amen. need to pray. God, help you, Jesus. our brother. In, in his time of need, rescue him mm -hmm. from his distress and Amen. deliver him into health, we pray in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we just receive that anointing of the blood Jesus. we receive that anointing Jesus. of the oil upon us yeah. lord and we Thank you, don't lord. receive any of these diseases lord hallelujah yeah. whatever it is i want to also lift up my brother terry st louis lord and this uh, fatigue and things that has hit him from time to time yeah lord we just pray god that you will quicken him you will touch Thank him you. God. you will uh, remove yeah. this from him that he will have the yes. stamina and the energy that is needed thank you jesus thank you lord Praise look god. at our brother now in jesus name oh god, Amen. Oh, god right there. thank mm -hmm. you lord 
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would truly defeat this foe, God, that you would give every wisdom, even the words of doing what, um, what you speak to us, God. We don't know what those are, but we believe that you want to bring this fatigue to an end, that he would have Amen. endless strength, God, to Amen. move forth in you, Lord, that you are speaking, you're calling and to Amen. us in this era of our lives and we are asking that you would defeat this Jesus. foe of fatigue, God, and um, confusion when the fatigue comes and mm -hmm. exhaustion and despair. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Father, we speak to depression in the name of Jesus, and we rebuke you in oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we know these are, these are classic symptoms of depression. Father, I'm asking you to release my brother Thank yes. you. from depression, yes. any anxiety, anything related to depression, that whole yes, Lord. devil family of, of spirit. Yes. Father, I rebuke him in mm -hmm. the name of Jesus. The light of Jesus Christ has come upon you. Yes. Thank and, you, Jesus. And we bind your works in Terry's life. We bind your works in Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We say no more to it. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, we're asking you to lift him up and to give him wisdom, to give him understanding, to give him discernment so that he'll know how to move and how to react to this situation. God, we need discernment. Mm -hmm. we, we need that that rhema word. We need that word that is spoken in the secret place of the Most High. That word that comes to us, God, even in the night season, in the quiet time, in the time when we are alone with you. God, we need you to speak to us in that place. Thank God, you, Lord. We need you, to, we need you to bring us to that place. Make a place for us in our busy life. Oh, God, show us where that place is. And, and and cause us even to abide in the... Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, God. God, oh, God. God, God I, I speak deliverance to Terry in the name of Jesus. Yes, I yes, speak yes, restoration yes, in the name yes. of Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. I say no more. We are, are in you, agreement with, mm -hmm. with, with, with... As a body, we yes. are touching this one thing. Hallelujah. Release you, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Restoration in Thank the name you, of God. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, let it be so. We pray. Oh, God, we're just believing you today. God, we don't. You, what Jesus. else is there for us except that we believe you and we trust you? God, with discernment, we need discernment. We absolutely have to have discernment. We need a word. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We need a word Hallelujah. from you. It, it, it doesn't have to come in the gallery of Zoom. It needs to come in the quiet place. It needs to come in, in the secret place. It needs to Hallelujah. come as we, as we approach the throne of grace and wait on the Lord for a word. Amen. God help us. God help us. We know to do these things, but we just don't do them. Mm -hmm. empower us strengthen us today god give us the grace uh, that's necessary Amen. to come into a, 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 a right understanding god there's no time anymore for 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 not having this alignment with you not having not not being in step with you in any form or fashion mm-hmm Father, we need, we need, we need mm. to hear your voice. Yes. We need to have that ongoing communion with you. Mm -hmm. It's not us just talking at you. We need to hear. Mm -hmm. We pray, but we don't listen. We bring mm -hmm. our requests and we go on about our requests, but we don't stop and we don't listen for what you have to say. God, help us today. Yes. Help us today. Let the power of this anointing, let the power of this environment of the Spirit 
to rest on us, not only for now, but as we go forward Amen. in our way, in our day, in our week, in our month, in our year. God is a desperate time. Mm -hmm. And we need you. Yes, Lord, we need you, Lord. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Abba. Mm. Praise the Lord. Let's see, before we go on, um, two things mentioned. One was familiar spirits and one was depression. Yes. Here, and I know of two on this line who have wrestled with this, and it is a familiar thing. And so uh, as we prayed and broke this thing with Terry, mm -hmm. uh, anyone else that has wrestled with this spirit of depression, we recognize that this is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And, God. you know, we as spirit-filled uh, overcoming Christians shouldn't be plagued with this thing. But this, again, is a spirit that comes, and it's a familiar thing that uh, – even as uh, John had mentioned with regard to Linda, maybe this thing is, is connected with a familiar type of thing, which means uh, passed down from family members. And maybe uh, these spirits have been around for even hundreds of years, potentially. For an opportunity. We don't know. But uh, anyway, I just want to uh, continue to pray for Stop. anyone else that has wrestled with this spirit of depression and some with some uh, it, it, it's such a long time mm -hmm. thing. It becomes a bedfellow and there just seems to be an acceptance that that's something that, you know, will come and go, but that is not, that's a lie. Mm -hmm. and I just don't receive it. And this word has come forth today, uh, uh that there could come a deliverance mm -hmm. and God. that this anointing would break this yoke, yeah. this yoke of depression. And there's bedfellows like anxiety and yes, being gloomy and uh, maybe even Confusion, causing tiredness and things like this. It doesn't Praise matter, God. whatever it is. This uh, root of depression. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to lay an axe to the root ah, of this spirit. Praise God. This familiar spirit in whoever. Uh, mm -hmm. And if uh, even besides those that are on the line, if, if those that are on uh, know of others, family members or uh, friends, brethren, co-workers that wrestle with this thing or hit with this thing, mm -hmm. you can just lift them up as well, too. So, Lord, again, we stand yes. in agreement Thank together you, and we curse and we bind this Thank spirit you, of depression in every form, this familiar spirit that Thank comes you, upon uh, our family members or it comes upon Thank us in some Jesus. way. And Lord, we don't receive it, and we curse, and we Hallelujah, Amen. In the name of Jesus, and by the blood of the Lamb, that it shall not come nigh our dwelling again. It shall not. There will not be an opening. And Lord, if if there's uh, something you need to speak to us that is triggering oh, this thing. If there's a back door open to this thing, yeah. whatever it is, uh -huh. God, we pray that you will speak clearly to those mm -hmm. that wrestle yes. with this from time to time, because mm -hmm. this is not our portion. Amen. And thank you, God, for it. We thank Praise you for God. delivering us, delivering your people yes. from this spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We are standing uh, upon your word, and we are set free today. And we will not receive it any longer. We will not be subject to it any longer. Praise God. Not submit to it any longer. Mm. You have set us free. And Hallelujah. Sets free is free Praise indeed. God. We speak it forth in the name of Jesus. Set us free, O oh God. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, brethren, I'd like y'all to pray for me. I uh, I deal with it. Uh, I've been praying against it, but I, I welcome the prayers of the saints mm -hmm. against this, uh, against all types of oppression. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just stand with our brother. Yeah, Jesus. We place our hands upon him, man, in spirit, Lord. and we bind this oppression, depression, anxiety, whatever it is. No more, no more. Hallelujah. Jesus. Cover yeah. him, surround him, touch him, cover him, keep him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, we pray against its bedfellow called loneliness. Lord, Jesus. Father, your word declares you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, the word is bedrock in our heart. We are never alone. We rebuke loneliness that accompanies you, Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All alone. Even the prophet of old struggled with loneliness. He, he thought he was the only one. Mm. And Lord, we have to speak to him that there were 7,000 that did not bow the knee to Baal. He thought he was all alone. Father, we bind that spirit. We come against loneliness you, Jesus. with the word of the Lord. Amen. The Lord of you are with us. You are always with us. You will never forsake us, even unto the ends of the world. Father, we pray, God, break the yoke of hell. Depression, Thank you, negativity, Jesus. negative thoughts, downing thoughts. Father, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Yes, for your promises are yea and amen. Amen. And we believe them, O oh God. You have nothing but greatness in store for your people, the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, for depression, no place for discouragement, no place Hallelujah. for the name of Jesus. Set our brother and everyone else that we know Thank of, Jesus. Lord God. Suffering Thank with you, it. Lord. Struggling with it in the name of Jesus, let them be free. Mm. The word of the Lord, we pray. Father, let the word of the Lord dwell within your people richly, that there's no room, no room for the enemy's lies. In the yes, name of Lord. Jesus, we pray. Oh, God. Ah, Jesus. Jesus. Amen, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, we, just, we just speak to these spirits in the name of Jesus, and we tell them, you spirits, get out of these people, and you go to the nearest fence post, and you get into those fence posts. That's where you need to be. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Get out of these people and leave them alone in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Cover these people with the God. blood. Yeah. The blood is the power. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Set your people free, O oh God. Set us free, Jesus. Father, we, we break the chain of agreement with any other spirit. <laughs> other than the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Father, whether it be in knowingly or unknowingly, mm -hmm. Bible says whatsoever spirit you submit yourself to, mm -hmm. his servant you are to obey. Yes. Father, we recognize that even in our lineage, even there has been agreements made. Mm -hmm. There has been submission. Mm -hmm. There has been a, a, a lending of our life's energy mm -hmm. to certain ones of darkness. Mm -hmm. Father, we ask you to put the light mm -hmm. on it, every one of them. Amen. Mm -hmm. Father, we're asking you to bring the blood of Jesus against every one of them. Thank you, Lord. Breaking every agreement. Yes, Lord. With every spirit. Yes, Lord. That is not the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In our lives, Father, we recognize that there could it could be generational. 
-hmm. familiar. Man. It, it could be unconsciously mm -hmm. the thing that we lend ourselves to, not even knowing, not even recognizing mm -hmm. that it's an it, it, there's an uncleanness about it. There's a, there's there is a devil that's feeding on us as a result of our complacency, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Father, we need discernment. Oh, God. Amen. We, we need to do business, God. Amen. Ha, Father, <laughs> help us. Help us, God, to come to that place for that we can communicate and commune with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Hear your voice to speak to these concerns. Father, we're bringing you the, the whole of the concern mm -hmm. corporately. Mm -hmm. and, and we're asking you to individually speak to each one according to the need. Hallelujah. He, said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Open up the ears. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Glory. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. I want to say something to um, something you just said, John, about um, generational. And um, just last uh, Sunday, I asked the Lord and I said, you know, since my mom passed, um, we have ministry to do. And I said, Lord, I ask you to cut the umbilical cord right now. Jesus. Hot touch. Cut the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. Cut every soul tie. Baba. I did that. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Cut every soul tie. Yes. That is not of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh Amen. God, because as much as much as I love my mom, as much as we mm -hmm. were close, yes. mm -hmm. ha ha ha, she is with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And the Lord is my focus. Mm -hmm. Man. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we might want to cut those unbiblical cords mm -hmm. yes. and soul mm -hmm. ties that were yeah. not aware of mm -hmm. that needs to be dealt with so we can move on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Seven mm -hmm. every tie, oh Lord. Amen. Every yoke. Every tie. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we do. Every day, oh Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Gary, uh, when we were praying for you um, about your arthritis, and then I think it was David who prayed mm -hmm. about... Um, you know, unforgiveness, and, um, you know, we've been praying a lot for individual bodies, but sometimes the biggest wounds are from brethren, mm -hmm. and I think of the brethren who have left us, and I believe it was a spirit of divorce that came in, yeah. and um, it really wounded many, mm -hmm. and um I'm thinking about this because Brother Castle and Joanne are ministering in Schuyler, but uh, this weekend and we, we aren't going or haven't gone, but I'm just thinking, you know, it happened a long, several years ago, but those wounds can run deep. And uh, then David, you shared about even those who might be going astray or into a wrong spirit, we need to pray for and um Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm just just burdened for just the the healing of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Yeah. Amen. Carol, go ahead and lead us in prayer. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, there are many brethren who we love who are no longer with us, Lord, for whatever mm -hmm. reasons, and yeah. we are sorrowed. Mm -hmm. We are deeply affected and hurt, oh God. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we forgive those people yes. who have even spoken evil against us. Mm -hmm. Lord, who have mm -hmm. maybe even cursed us, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, those who um, have just left. And so, Father, we do forgive them. And we pray, Lord, Thank you, Lord. that yes. there would be a deliverance in your yeah. body. Yes, from every yeah. spirit, unclean yes. spirit, Lord, Amen. that has influenced them, has influenced us, Lord, where our hearts have not been right. Mm -hmm. So forgive us, Lord, as yeah. we forgive them. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, same Amen. Man. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Pardon? Yeah, go on to your phone. Uh, your speaker phone is not real clear. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, not I'm David. Not. I'm not speaking oh. to you, David. I'm speaking to Emily. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, much better. Thanks. Better? Yeah, much better. Okay. Okay. Um, I am not sure how to um, move forward with my thought here, but I, it kind of keeps coming to me. So I just want to um, submit it and see, you know, if the Lord would um, have any thoughts about it or or you would have any thoughts about it and that is that when we were praying for Gary um, earlier um, and we were praying for his arthritis it was um, yeah. and there was that prayer coming forth about uh, unforgiveness or bitterness um, you know it's very interesting but his grandmother came to me came into my mind and um you know we are battling things that i i i don't even know like how it all fits but i know we are battling when we say hereditary and we say familiar things they're things that have come down the pipe through mm -hmm. our ancestors yeah and that mm -hmm. for however they were imparted to us they were imparted mm -hmm. and um the and i was just wondering um since we're moving in this direction you know there's that scripture that says whatever whatever sins we remit mm -hmm. yeah. they are remitted yes and I think there's, you know, um, maybe some more understanding in this regard. And I'm not sure, uh, you know, that this is the moment, but, but I just wanted to um, put that on the table and see if there's any more understanding for us. Because some of these things come not out, but by prayer and fasting. Um, and, 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 you know, I don't know about the rest of you, but sometimes I've, I've asked the question, Lord, how in the world did this ever come into my mind? Or mm -hmm. why am I battling such a thing as this when I've never given myself to it? Uh -huh. In other mm -hmm. words, something I inherited that um, came down the pipe and um, you know, some of these things last our lifetime and we're asking God, uh, you know, let your anointing, uh, hmm. break this yoke of iniquity, Amen. let your anointing. And isn't there a time and a dispensation when it's time that the Lord by his anointing, he breaks the yoke. Yeah. 
and he and and maybe this is why the lord is stirring this particular direction this morning Mm -hmm. um this afternoon because you know there's a deeper thing that the lord is desirous to deliver us of Mm -hmm. um you know it it, it's not just a spirit of depression or Mm -hmm. you know there's some link there there's some uh thing that we must remit we must loose our agreement with it yeah yeah um we must renounce it we must reject it we must um you know endeavor to obey the spirit of the lord you know for for complete deliverance and I, i'm not exactly sure what to do with everything i just said but um maybe you could help us whoever well you, you know. know emily here's a, here's a, a, the thought that comes to me you know um th- these uh, these devils operate in a contractual way you, you know, they feel like once you have submitted, whether it be us or someone down the lineage has submitted to them, the Bible, the, it's a law of the spirit that says his servant, you are to obey. Mm-hmm. So now, now, that having been said, we recognize that there are, it, it, it's almost that agreement you know, when we sign a piece of paper that 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 uh, locks us into an agreement, it's contractual that way. And these devils feel like they have a contractual right to not only the one who was submitted, but the whole lineage coming down from that from that one, or co- however direction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. So you know, I I remember we were in Africa, and Barb Walton Jesus. Coyle now, but Walton then, uh, we were praying for this lady, and she had a word of knowledge that said uh, she she rebuked some devil that uh, and said that that uh, I, I I disannul the contract that has been uh, agreed upon. Uh, over your life and and this girl dropped down on the floor and slithered it across the floor like a snake it was the craziest thing i ever seen barbara went right after her stood her on her feet and rebuked that devil until it was all done well it turned out that somewhere down the lineage uh, uh that you know they give their children to spirits they 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 pour out libations and 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 do things that appease the family spirit and so there's there's this contractual thing that i think is what you're t- you know is what i hear when you when you say what you say um and so father right now we disannul we make void we can we we, we uh, we break every contract, every assignment from hell that comes down from the lineage of each and every one here that's hearing this word right now. Break it, it, Father, we are in agreement together for the breaking of this con- these contracts by reason of submission. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. These devils don't care if you know or you don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't care. They're they're experts at deception. And they will bring you something that looks good. Even like an apple. They will bring you something that looks good. And and, and get you to agree. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, you may not like this, but I'm going to tell you anyhow. You, you know, w- when we submit to this Christmas business, sorry, it's pagan. You know, the Christmas tree is paganism. It, it, the Festival of Lights 
and all of the whole package, St. Nicholas, come on. You, you know, pick a day other than Nimrod's birthday to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. You, you know, we, we unwillingly, uh, unwittingly submit ourselves to the spirit that's driving that thing. Even Catholicism is a part of that family of spirit that is driving that. You know, <laughs> color your Easter egg and, 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 and get the, the Easter bunny out. You just submitted to a spirit when you come into agreement with and his suggestion to do these things. You come into agreement with them. And, 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 and I don't know, it just in the light of what we're seeing and hearing, um, it, it could well be that some of this stuff is part of our problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know. God help us. We need discernment. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, coming back to even uh, following up on John's thought initially and then Emily's thought here. Emily, you had uh, something come before you, your grandmother. And I'm sure she's deceased, okay? She's gone. And the key of the scripture, whatsoever sins you remit, they are remitted. There are certain sins that have been committed by generations gone by, amen. Those people are long gone. Uh, they can't uh, come to a place of forgiveness. So remitting sin is taking charge over that which was committed even Years ago, centuries ago, the person or persons that committed such atrocities or sins, they're gone. Amen. Whatever side, heaven or hell, they fell on. But the things that was committed, amen, that is the thing we have, the blood of Jesus Christ to come against those things. So it's no, no question you had the vision of the grandmother mm -hmm. and also talked about the remitting of sins. Amen. Amen. And we're going to ask for God to specifically show yeah, you, Gary, what it is in regards to the link of the grandmother. There's no way God gave you that vision without him wanting to release to you information, wisdom, mm -hmm. yeah. what you see, what, what is holding. Sometimes it takes a very specific prayer. Mm -hmm. It's like a tank turret. It's got to be turned in a certain direction in order to hit the enemy. It, we're praying for that exact direction. Amen. And so we're going to pray in a moment. But the second point is some spirits intertwine themselves so well around our personality. This is the hardest part to get deliverance from because it's wrapped in our personality. And we, we think it's us. Amen. But it's really not us. It's really a spirit that is somewhat spoken warped us it's wrapped itself around us and we have to pray for god to release uh, the wisdom the enlightenment the discernment how that spirit can be unwrapped amen and our whole personality is now in line with the lord and no longer uh woven around so to speak around with that spirit amen that's a deep work of the spirit uh, the word of god Amen. Uh, like depression. I believe the greatest antidote for depression is the word of God. Mm -hmm. You, you got to get into the word. You got to believe the word, pray mm -hmm. the word. Amen. And counter that depression with the word of the Lord. And it will, it will give way. It will finally break loose and you won't be troubled anymore because the word of God has displaced that spirit of depression. Amen. So, Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, we pray for Emily Gary. Lord, we pray you're speaking something there. The grandmother, uh, long past, long gone. But somehow there's a linkage. There's a lineage. Father, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we pray together that, Lord, whatever is being revealed right now would be dislodged by the blood. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we pray the anointing would break that yoke. Father, we pray, God, specifically, if there's wisdom to be imparted, more enlightenment and discernment, we pray for this in the name of Jesus, but this thing must go. It must go. It must be broken. 
as our sister shared about the pipeline coming down, coming down the pipeline. Father, we are praying that every one of us on this call would gain the insight, gain the discernment, Lord God, that you would show us what we're up against, the pipelines coming down to us, why we are the way we are, why we're wired the way we're wired, how these things have come down upon us. Lord, years ago, I saw a vision of the devil laughing, laughing. He said, these people will never break all the chains and all the holds that I have upon them. Mm. Devil, you're a liar. Amen. You're a liar. We rebuke you. Every chain, every pipe hold, every tethering is going to be broken. It's being broken by the word of the Lord. God is going to have a people, and we are calling ourselves the people of God to be numbered with the body of Christ in this hour. It's going to break those chains in the name of Jesus Christ. God, deliver us. We pray, God, show us what sins have been committed. Lord, gone back. Sometimes five, 600 years, a land is polluted because the sins of the forefathers are there. But Father, we remit by the blood of Jesus Christ, we remit those things that were committed years and years ago that they would not have a stronghold upon us in the name of Jesus. Father, we're praying spirits that have wrapped itself in our personality, Lord God. Father, only you can unravel this by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's step by step. It's inch by inch. We're going to possess the land step by step until we finally possess the whole land. But show us, each of us, the step that we need to take in the right direction in you to unravel those spirits that, Lord God, have woven themselves into our personality and made us who we think we are, but we're not that. In the name of the Lord, we cut them off by the blood. We're praying tonight that the wisdom of God, the insight, the discernment be released to your people that we would learn, Lord God, how to destroy this devil, how to tear him down, how to even uproot him out of our lives from the things that have been committed by even our great, 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 great grandfather or whatever is back there. Sins, Lord God, that have been committed of people long gone, but it continues down because spirits live forever. Amen. They come down and they come down. They invade our life. We're praying God they would be cut off, every one of them, in the name of Jesus, because you're calling for a people unto yourself, free from every devil, free from every hold, in the name of the Lord. Our brother John shared about what we saw in Africa. Lord, It's here in America. It's in all of our bloodlines. God, we pray in the name of the Lord. God, enable us by the Spirit to cut off every devil in hell that has invaded this territory. Amen. And our family's territory. And even our children's territory. All the way down to our grandchildren and our whole family lineage. God, we pray you would release every key that is needed in Jesus name. We pray. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Jill, Jill has a request. Uh, you, as David, you just touched it exactly what, <laughs> what her prayer need is. And, you know, um, the concern for me right at the moment with regard to her, um, her question for prayer is our position as it, as it relates to our children and our grandchildren, Mm -hmm. you you know, we're talking about what was back behind us Mm -hmm. coming down. Yeah. What about our participation and, and how it's influencing our children and our children's children. And, Mm -hmm. And we have a situation um, with our granddaughter who uh, has a uh, if she sees food she wants to eat it uh, and it's not just um, it's abnormally so mm-hmm. you know I mean she sees it she wants to eat it and, and she eats it and she wants to eat more and so as a result, she's, she's become 
big. How old did they say she is? She's, she's actually seven, but she's got the bone structure of a 10 year old. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they did just a physical exam and she didn't have any signs of early onset puberty, but now they have to do a hormonal um, assessment uh, or uh, test to find out if she, of course, if they give her, they give mom and dad the most horrible things that it could be, you know, mm -hmm. um, these other crazy diseases. And so they're trying to really take a stand that, um, that she's just a big girl and she'll eventually grow into it. Um, but there's still a concern that, you know, uh, if there is some kind of chemical imbalance and um, like I say, she's like, she's 99% of every scale that she's on that they test. Um, and like they said that she's got the bone structure of a 10 year old when she's only seven. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. so, you know, again, I didn't know if this was an opportunity for that type of prayer. Sure. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm just kind of tossing it out there. Amen. You know, uh, Jill, your child's not the only one. You know, there are many today. Uh, a lot of the foods that are being ingested mm -hmm. are already have growth hormones in them. You know, the cattle. Uh, right. Cattle are twice the size that they would have been 40 years ago at that age. You know, the cattle are being fed growth hormones. It's all driven by money, as we know, and the lust of money. Uh, but that's one thing. And then the other is just to pray. Uh, you're obviously sharing gluttony, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the spirit. And we can pray. And it does come down from generation to generation. But the good news is, if you read Isaiah chapter 59, iniquity yeah, is... We read it today. <laughs> <laughs> so much iniquity is spoken, how things are interwoven like spider webs, you know, and cockatrice eggs and everything that hatch and come forth. It's all talking generational, but the beautiful thing, I mean, Isaiah 59 is probably the saddest chapter in the whole Bible, but when you come to the end, the last verse, listen to the last verse of this. It says, as for me, well, let me back up and read the last three verses because it's so good. And one of them we know so very well. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the West and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, mm -hmm. I'm talking about ancestral spirits now coming in like a flood, amen. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him and the redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. Watch this now, last verse. As for me, this is my covenant. Brother John, you're talking about covenants. Yeah, this amen. Covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words, which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord from henceforth and forevermore. When it is spoken in our lives, it breaks it for the generations coming down. It breaks it for our children, our grandchildren. Amen. Mm -hmm. You get deliverance from something, watch your grandchildren walk into it. I mean, just walk into it, amen, because it's been broken. The stronghold has been broken, and it can't go down any further. That's the promise of Isaiah 59, yeah. is that, yes, it's generational for the enemy, but it's generational for the people of God as well, amen. Yeah. amen. So let us pray, amen. We're all here together. We all join you. We all of, know of those that have this problem, especially amongst this generation coming up the children, the grandchildren. Yeah. Brother Dave, um, one, one, before we pray, one of the things that did help a few years ago, I heard a very interesting um, nugget that um, it was, it's also to, to, what I did was I re rejected our um, ancestors' blood and accepted the blood of Jesus Christ mm. and and his lineage. And that has helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, we could do that as well. Okay. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Father, we just pray, all of us together on this call, we see what's transpiring in the world. 
Uh, the enemy has gotten into the food chain. He's gotten into the food supply. He's, he's just warping it, Lord God. He's twisting it. He's developing things that we can hardly even call food today. Father, we, we see that as an enemy of the people of God, the enemy. And Father, we're praying, God, that you would enable us with wisdom, Lord God, by the Spirit, to be absolutely selective in what we partake of and what our children and our grandchildren partake of. Father, we pray for wisdom, insight, discernment. Lord, it's getting harder and harder to find real food. Amen. Everything is made in laboratories and chemical labs today. Father, we pray, God, release wisdom, release discernment, we pray. Father, to go back to the farm, to go back to real grown foods is getting harder and harder. But Father, we pray that you would release infinite wisdom from above for us, for our children. The, the wheat that we eat are no longer the wheat of the Bible. The salt that we partake of is not the salt of the Bible. The flour is not the flour of the scripture. But Lord, it's been so GMO'd. Father, we're praying, God, absolutely bring deliverance to us, your people of God. And Father, we do come against the spirit of gluttony in the name of the Lord. Father, when our body can't get the nutrients, it hungers for more, hungers for more, and it's longing for the nutrients, and by it, other things happen. Uh, absolutely, we grow bigger. We, we just take on more and more and more because our bodies are hungry for the nutrients it can't get out of the foods that we partake of. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray against gluttony by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a sin. It's marked so in the scripture. We are praying, God, for your appetite to take a hold of our hearts, that we would be driven only by the appetite of God. Help us, God, to be a people that, as our sister shared earlier, fast in prayer. Amen. Some of these things don't go out except by prayer and fasting, where we seek you diligently. We partake of the bread of life from heaven and heaven only. Amen. And we abstain from the table to partake of you, O oh God, to overcome these spirits. Father, what we're speaking of today is deep entrenched spirits that come down through the generations, that come down through the ancestry, but we are believing your word. Father, let it stop right here. Let it stop with each one of us on this call today. Amen. Let it be broken by the blood of Jesus Christ, and let us see our children and our grandchildren delivered of every aspect of those spirits that have invaded our territory, that they be canceled by the blood. Give us infinite wisdom. Help us, Lord God, in the days, weeks, months ahead to receive these as marching orders to break every stronghold, to break every hold. Father, we pray that spouses, amen, husbands would listen to wives, what they discern. Amen. For wives to listen to their husbands and what they discern. Because, Lord, there's insight, there's revelation of family lineages that oftentimes we're involved in, we're blinded by, we can't see. But someone on the outside can see it. Father, we pray that we would listen to one another. And, Lord, take it to heart and break these yokes. Lord God, break them and begin to see the deliverance unfold to our family members. Mm. Uh, we, we just pray for John and Jill right now. They see a problem that all of us are seeing amongst, Lord, our neighbors even, our family, Lord God, our direct relatives. Father, we're praying, God, break this yoke, we pray. Children entering into puberty way before it's time. Father, all this is driven by the foods that we're partaking of. God, there's an answer in you. We know there is. And we pray, God, release the answer to each one of us that we would walk in obedience. Our brother John shared so much about hearing the voice, but not obeying. Father, today, we want to set a precedent in our lives that as you speak to our hearts, afresh and anew, we want and desire the spirit of obedience, that we would obey. And as we obey, you'll give us more and you'll give us more. And we'll walk more and more and more into obedience by the Spirit. Help us, Lord. 
God, deliver us. Deliver us from the kingdom of Saul. Amen. Saul. Amen. Uh, amen. Rebellion was as his witchcraft, it said. Mm -hmm. God, my God, deliver us, we pray. And iniquity, the sin of idolatry is as is iniquity. God, deliver us from these powers of darkness. We no longer want to be associated with the kingdom of Saul in the spirit anymore. In the name of the Lord, we are transferring. We are moving by the direction of the spirit of God into the kingdom, the new kingdom age, the age of the kingdom in Christ Jesus, where we are free from these iniquities and these ancestral spirits that have plagued us all of these years. And let us see the victory in our children's lives. We will see it. We have seen it before. It happens. It's reality. We pray, oh God, let it stop with each one of us that our children would be free in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. So, Father, we, we pray specifically for Joel and Christina and Abigail and uh, their upcoming appointment. Father, that you would put them um, in front of the correct person, mm -hmm. uh, the correct doctor, Lord. And we just ask that that um, even in the, the, the testing process, we know that that's in itself is going to be a challenge with Abigail, yeah. um, just getting her blood drawn. And so Father, we just ask even now that you would just uh, bring uh, comforting angels into the situation, Lord. That they could go through the process. They could get the answers, Father. And, and we just pray that, yes. that your hand would be over them and, and that the blood of Jesus would be the, um, the, the, um, the answer that would bring correction into, even if there is some kind of hormonal imbalance, um, that you would bring uh, correct healing and set that, those mm -hmm. uh, balances in order. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we just thank you right now. We just ask that um, uh, your, your uh, great love that is for all of our children and our grandchildren, Lord, that you would uh, cover them, keep them, Lord God, and bring them into complete and perfect health. We pray it in Jesus' name. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I don't think we should... Uh, walk away from what Maxine said, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, um, right. he, I, I believe it's Ezekiel 16, where it, it's, it's, uh, it, the Lord says, your mother was a Hittite, and your father was a Canaanite, mm -hmm. and no, none I pitied you, I saw you in your own blood, mm. and he said, and no one cut your umbilical cord mm. from you, you know, it speaks of of this attachment, even like Maxine was talking about. Yes. It, you know, um, it goes on to say that that there came a season of love and God poured out water and washed them. I believe that there's a connection to that scripture, to the water baptism, the circumcision that's made without hands. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there may be more to it than that. And, uh, you know, th that, that's a specific scripture that I know that talks about the condition that Maxine's talking about, where, where there are those that have gone and, and never had that umbilical cord to their uh, father and mother's lineage cut off and, and dealt with. There is a circumcision that's needed for some that uh, exactly what what she's saying, Maxine. I think you should pray that through, and okay. and and clean that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Father God, we we we're ailing from this. Uh, 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 we need to move on, and we yeah. need to move on in you, Lord God. So mm -hmm. we're asking for every brethren uh, uh, at the sound of our voices right now and the ones that are not even on this call in our family who are battling severely with, um, with losses that we can't even comprehend. Lord God, we ask you to sever these ties. 
We yeah. love these people who have gone on, but Lord God, we have life in us. Yeah. We're not dead and we need to move on in you or in our ministry. Lord God, we need clean ministry. You said, don't put old wine in, in, in old um, flask, but to put, uh, um, new. put new wine in old flask. Lord. Mm -hmm. But Lord God, we're asking as our, we are your vessels, Lord God. We're asking you to clean us up. Mm -hmm. So sever every tie, Very sever good. every unbiblical cord to, to whoever, even though we don't, if we don't remember them, whoever it is, sever these generational ties. And we, we renounce every uh, uh, um, bloodline to our family mm -hmm. and uh, we accept wholeheartedly the bloodline of Jesus Christ yeah. and um, we, we, we receive your cleansing we receive mm -hmm. your healing Lord yeah. God in every cell of our bodies to be washed clean mm -hmm. to be washed clean mm -hmm. and yeah. and um, especially this in this new year, Lord God, that we have a new outlook and a new beginning, Lord God. So we submit, and yeah. that's a big word, we submit ourselves to you. We yeah. submit our, our, our ways, Lord, and we submit our family, Lord God, to you. We hand them over to you, and we ask for change, and we ask you, Lord God, to bless and sanctify our family yes. in the mighty name of Yeshua. In Jesus, amen. Yes, amen. yes, amen. 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 And John, I really thank you because um, you hit a nerve and uh, um, it's the nerve of truth. And I love that. And mm -hmm. I thank you, my brother. I thank you for that. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were just yesterday, you remember David and Gary were on the call. Yeah. You know, the grace that God gives in gifting each of us Amen. it's the grace of god that allows for the movement of the spirit as we're experiencing it today you Amen. know so i you know i i don't want to take credit for for a grace that god has uh, allowed for you know it's not good for my head <laughs> but uh, but i appreciate where you're coming from Maxine you know again it's just a, a reminder that that's the source we we hear when we hear from the Lord and we act in obedience these are the kinds of things that unfold as a result of that so Hallelujah. praise God Amen. Amen. I, I just want to add in too it's been about an hour and 15 minutes ago that uh, Emily I don't even remember I do kind of remember um, it was she was talking about how there was this little pocket of pain and issues going in going on in, in this group and and the prayer and the and the, the the unction to move over those things seemed to be attached everything seemed to be all part of another and I didn't know exactly how to put together what the Lord was doing in my head but she said exactly what happened what I heard you know, so that's just, I just wanted to verify, you know, that. So it's all the spirit, like you said, John, it's just been moving immensely. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Yeah, praise God. I'm, I just wanted to say, I just thought about how I said that. I'm no authority on, <clears throat> on this whole thing. I was as surprised as as she was probably to hear what what she heard from the Lord. I mean, I just kind of went, wow. And then she said something, and I was, you know, double wowed. So it's, I, I, it's not coming out of my head then. So <laughs> 
I can Great. remember and wow myself. What was the double wow you heard? We love the <laughs> the double wow. That's the new buzzword. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, well, you know, we, we had all these things, and then I heard the Lord say, That's those are all related. That's this whole thing is related here, you know, and then that's exactly what Emily said. That kind of reinforced what was going on in my in my, but she said it. So I was just trying to reinforce it. That's all I yeah. all I know. I was amazed by it though. So it was a kind of a double wow. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, thank you, Pat, for, for saying that because I felt like I was fumbling all over my tongue in order to no, exactly. articulate what it was I, I was trying to say. So you praise said exactly God. What was going on. Also, earlier, I guess I need to apologize. I, I when Gary, when you were speaking. I unmuted to say something, and then I guess I forgot to unmute. So I was here in the background praying, and I realized when I came up to the phone that I was unmuted. So sorry about that. No, it's okay. It was it was great. You got you went right off on something, and we just praise the Lord for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Oh, praise God, double wall. Double wall. <laughs> it's the double wall anointing. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, praise God. Amen. Well, last Sunday we talked about a day coming where we'll probably go 24 7. So we're, we're approaching that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, praise God. Amen. Well, praise God. What a marvelous meeting today. Amen. Anyone else have anything left before someone closes us in prayer? Mm -hmm. Amen. David. Yes, sir. And again, not for today, but um, earlier when we were talking about depression, mm -hmm. I think the, going to biblical depression is a modern 20th century psychological word. It is not a biblical word. And I think we get, we, and, and the problem what happens is a lot of times people try to address it in a psychological way, but there is a way in the scriptures, there are scriptural words that are similar to that, that really talk about that in, in the aspect on it. So I think that's something going in, in farther to see it with that. It's, it's fear motivated and it has a, it's a very, it's, it's a very intense study. Um, but I think we could, as we have explored this other thing to a great extent, um, the double wow. I think we could we could maybe find a similar double wow if we go into looking at depression and really see what that motivates us because that is a um, how do you want to say it? It is very prevalent among God's people, and it wasn't. It was in the scriptures too, so we'll see that. But uh, Martha had depression when she was worried about everything. <laughs> that's what was motivating her so just to give an idea and great men of God such as David and Jeremiah dealt with depression so it's not a, a thing to be to be ashamed of but to realize how they went through it and go you know what I'm saying but it's it's an interesting thing but I just don't want to see left with the word depression because that is a 20th century psychological term it is not a biblical term and we want to we need to delve deeper and go back into the biblical roots of that so we understand because there's biblical answers to how to deal with depression. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Tom. That's mm -hmm. good. Praise God. Um, I did have uh, one other thing to say. I've been sitting here very quiet today, but um, I'm so excited about the word of God. I'm so excited about what we have received. Um, I'm excited because I know that the Spirit of God is speaking strongly to his people in this hour, no less to myself uh, and this household. He's speaking very strongly and he's doing a great work. But in the thing that um, the Lord had shared with me in the very beginning, Brother David, 
as he was ministering was hitting on so much of that word that um, uh, I was just so moved. And um, I just wanted to include sort of uh, some of what uh, he said um, as a conclusion. It's not very long that ties in with that. And again, the beginning of that was to focus on the faith in which our foundation in Christ Jesus has been laid in that he arose. And, and, and are we, uh, you know, ask ourselves, we believe that we are part, are part of the body of Christ. And then if we believe that we are part of the body of Christ, then in him, we rise by faith that his word, his word, his very word shall set us free. So when brother David was going uh, over this and he said, brethren, we're looking for the anointing of God to come upon us. And that was first John second chapter 27 verse. And says, uh, he said, our spirit discerns truth. There is an anointing that abides with us, just like Jesus Christ received the anointing. Mm -hmm. So that message mm -hmm. was still going forth, even in the word that was being brought forth. And then in the book of 1 Samuel, uh, when he talks about... Um, the anointing that is going on uh, in, in those readings. Um, there was also some time in 1 Samuel, I believe that it is uh, 16 and 15, speaks of the spirit of God came upon David, was a fresh anointed, fresh anointing for a King David people. And in Isaiah, 10 and 27, we need fresh oil, mm -hmm. fresh anointing. Praise almighty God. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. Praise mm -hmm. God. Linda, would you close us in prayer? Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Yes. Praise you, Jesus. Heavenly Thank Father, you, Jesus. God. Lord, we just come before you, Lord God, with a humble heart, Lord God, and ears to hear, Lord God, what you're speaking to your people in this hour. We thank you for this time that we have shared together. We thank you for this word. We thank you for your anointing, oh God, that has gone forth. We thank you for what you're doing in our individual lives, and we thank you for what you're doing in us as a people. For truly in this hour, you are growing your people. Lord God, truly in this hour, you are moving us forward, Lord. You are preparing us for the thing that you are preparing us for. Lord God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for every word that went forth today. Lord God, that would help us to rise up and, and help us, Lord God, to um, just find a deeper place in you, to grow in you. Lord God, we just give you glory, honor, and the praise, Lord God. And we ask, Lord God, that you will strengthen each one on this call, that you will strengthen us and anoint us for the thing that you have purposed our various lives for mm -hmm. in this time. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing in us. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, blessings, brethren. Praise God. We'll see you all Wednesday night. We trust. Praise God. Okay. We can all unmute. Say good night. God bless you. Good night. Good night, all. God bless, God bless you all. God bless. Good night. God bless, God bless you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.